Hey guys, thanks for checking out this video. I know normally I do these intros in the shop, but I had to run out and run some errands today, so I figured I'd go ahead and shoot this thing on the road. Not that I'm really far from home, but you know, uh, just figured I'd shoot it in my truck, because why not? Um, anyways, the main point of this video is to say thank you for all of my subscribers. Uh, I just hit the 1,000 subscriber mark, which to some may not seem like much, but to anybody who started a YouTube channel from scratch, that's that's a cool milestone. And uh, I just wanted to thank you all very much for checking out my videos, for subscribing, um, all the nice comments and the likes and everything. I just I really appreciate it. And the community here on YouTube and Instagram of all the makers and woodworkers and everything is just really awesome, and I love being a part of that. Um, I watched it for a lot of years before I decided to throw my hat in the ring and start making videos. Um, and I'm really happy I finally made the jump this last year in 2017. So um, to celebrate and to try something new, that's what I've been into lately, is trying new things that I've always wanted to do. Um, I made this little uh, commemorative emblem or plaque or whatever you want to call it. Um, and we cast it in pewter. Uh, a friend of mine, Matt, came down just to help me out. And it was definitely helpful to have an extra pair of hands. And it was great to see him. Um, and, uh, yeah, so we basically we milled the template out on the CNC, um, poured the uh, melted the pewter, poured it into the mold, and then did some finish work. Um, if you stick around, you'll see how I did it. And, again, just thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate all the, uh, all the support and all the love. And uh, I look forward to continuing that in 2017. All right, so here I'm laying out the graphics in Adobe Illustrator. Kind of a play on the YouTube play button, but a little distorted with the thousand in the middle. Then I bring it into Vectric V Carve software and give it the carve settings I want and run a simulation so you can see what's going on. And then we move. Alright, so this is the Shapeoko 3 CNC, which is offered by Carbide 3D. I know a lot of people had uh, trouble with its predecessors, but I gotta say I've really had great luck with this machine so far and it's one of the earlier units. Um, they've actually made a lot of improvements to it since I purchased this. Um, someday I might upgrade the size which will come with some of those upgraded parts. I'm just zeroing the machine in here and we're going to be off to the races. I don't know why but for some reason this dust cloud looked really pretty in person. It's kind of neat on camera, but it was way prettier in person. Now obviously the CNC machine is not operating this fast. Um, this total, uh, total CNC time on this was about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Um, one thing I've learned for projects like this is always make more than one mold or vinyl or whatever you're working on if it's something you've never done before, because chances are you're going to need it, and we did. Now those three little empty pockets there are basically just ingot molds to hold the excess metal. So I scraped off the tear out and brushed it off with a steel brush here and then we were ready to go. So here I have some ceramic fire blocks and soldering pads from all my jewelry stuff and that uh, crucible there I had, I've had for years meaning to use it for casting and never got around to it, finally got around to it. I'm just using a cheapy propane torch here. I did get a hose accessory for it for a couple extra bucks, but it's just a cheap bottom-of-the-line propane torch that you get at any hardware store. Um, luckily, pewter has a really low melting temperature. I think it's around 450 degrees or so, so it doesn't take a whole lot. But uh, yeah, then we poured the first mold. Now you see here it's bubbling, um, and it really uh, didn't come out great this first time. It was a lot better than we expected, which is nice, but you see those really large bubbles that look kind of like pizza bubbles? Um, it ended up that those left some pretty big voids in the first piece. So we went ahead and tried a second piece. Now in the second piece we torched the mold first. I don't think that really helped anything. If anything I think it damaged it. But um, overall the second one came out really really great and we were really stoked with how it came out. Now one thing we also tried here is shaking it a lot more violently to help get the metal in all the areas and I think this really helped the great result for this second casting. Um, I also tried to pop some of the bubbles with uh, my razor knife and Matt reached in to help with that as well. Um, overall what I found when I was casting it was just really helpful to have a second pair of hands just to pass stuff off or hand me stuff or you know help poke bubbles while I was shaking the mold. That sounds kind of wrong. Alright, so it has kind of a yellowish tinge when we first get it out. 
and then we brushed it off with a steel brush again to, and that brought it to its kind of gray silver state. And here's a close up of the finished piece. That rough texture pretty much mimics the MDF, so I'm pretty sure that's the reason for it. I've seen other molds made of silicone and other things that were a lot smoother. So now because of that rough texture, we want to sand it. And so here I'm just sanding it on some sanding blocks I made by um, applying spray glue and sandpaper to pieces of scrap wood. We saw before and after of the sanding there. And now we're going to cut off the little excess part on the edges. This is just a jeweler saw with a pretty thick blade. Thick for a jeweler saw anyways. And here I'm just applying some cutting lubricant. It's kind of a waxy substance to the blade. And then we proceed to cutting it out. Now this is a jeweler saw, but it operates very much like a coping saw. Um, it uses a similar kind of up and down motion to a scroll saw, which is usually motorized. Um, the blades are actually pretty similar to scroll saw blades, and I've actually heard of some folks using jeweler saw blades in their scroll saws. Then I'm just filing the edges flat here. They're not totally perfect where the cut is. Um, I could have cut this out on the porta band with the table as well, but sometimes I find that with stuff like this, hand tools end up being a little bit better. Um, you end up with less mistakes because you're taking off smaller material, smaller amounts of material. Then back to sanding. So now I'm sanding the backside, which is rough. And again, this is on the uh, sanding blocks that are just um, sandpaper glued to plywood and MDF. Then we clean all the dust and stuff off. In jewelry class, a lot of times we used ammonia, but I had some Simple Green handy, so that's what I used. And then I have a couple of uh, old water bottles in the shop that I keep. I don't throw them away or dump them out so that I can use them since I don't have a sink. And then we just paint the background black. Now we do end up painting the, uh, the upper surface black too, but then we just sand that back later. And one thing about that paint, um, that's the, the Rust-Oleum two times coverage or whatever they call it. Um, actually, on this project and the previous project, I used it for something similar. Um, it, I don't know if I really like it, so I'm going to try some new paints. Um, here I'm using a, a leather strop, basically. Um, when I was younger and my jewelry teacher made this for me, we didn't really have a name for it. It was just the leather polishing thingy. Um, but once I got into woodworking, I learned that that was called a strop. Um, and I've had this for years. Um, and uh, about 15 years since he made it for me back in high school because we had some in class and I couldn't buy them because I didn't know what they were called um, but it's just nice you apply some uh, polishing compound to it that first one was called Tripoli um, this one is just a jeweler's rouge um, called Fabuluster and it's so each one the Tripoli is a little rougher of an abrasive and then the rouge is a uh, is a little bit finer and uh, you can also use this on a like a Dremel or a flex shaft with a polishing wheel or on a large buffer but I just didn't feel like doing that. I felt like doing it by hand, so I did. All right, so on, on some of my videos, I talk about what I learned at the end, and, and this one was no exception. I definitely learned a couple of things, but overall, I was actually really pleased with how it went for the fact that I've never done this type of casting before. Um, one of the main things we learned between the first try and the second try was to really move the mold to get some of the larger air pockets out. Um, in the first one, we had a pretty large air pocket that if I were to have sanded the back flat like I did on this one, it would have basically left a hole because it was so deep of an air pocket. Um, the, so you'll see in the video, or you would have seen in the video already, that, um, that the second time around we really shook it, and I really think that helped get the big air pockets out. Um, the other thing was for doing the CNC for the mold, um, I noticed there was a lot of, and I'm sure you noticed too, there was a lot of um fuzzy stuff you know chip out not really chip out but kind of just fuzzy stuff hanging on to the mold and i don't know if that was just because of the mdf the nature of that particular piece of mdf or if it was the uh the bit that i was using i was just using an eighth inch end mill which i think might have an up cut to it and a down cut might have offered a cleaner cut without all the fuzzy stuff on the edges but it was still pretty easy to clean out with a steel bristle brush and a razor to scrape off um, so overall, I'm, I'm still not all that uh, unhappy with how that came out, but next time I might try a different bit to see if it works better. Um, other than that, please please uh, 
Uh, rate this video, like it if you liked it, hit the thumbs down if you didn't like it. Um, please subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Uh, leave me some comments and uh, share the video if you like it, um, if you think somebody else would enjoy it. And thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it and I look forward to bringing you more. Have a good one.